okay, hello. So basically this is kind of a workshop slash speed paint slash exclamation slash ramble about my story in my script writing class I had this year called Ghost Roomy. Uh, I originally had this whole plan to write out the scripts of every single pivotal moment slash episode, but then time passed and a daunting realization that I'm an animation major hung over my shoulders. I, I do not have that kind of time, especially with candidacy and how it actually just folded me writing four to five 22 page scripts with everything else in classes and life going on. Yeah, no, that was not going to happen, bro. <laughs> and that really sucked because I had a lot of ideas I didn't get to write or share with the class. So I thought I might as well share with this one. Also, I think this is a really good opportunity to get some concepts and character designs down because I really don't have any. Like I have general ideas and conversations and scenes, but they aren't really fleshed out too much. And I thought it would be fun. Uh, also, the drawings are going to be like too serious or anything. They're they're like doodles and stuff. It's also been like four to five months since I've drawn anything personal or just anything not class related. So I kind of forgot how to draw. <laughs> but you know what? That's okay. Workshopping. We're good. We're fine. Everything's cool. So a summary of the story is basically this. At Sam's New College, there are a bunch of superstitions and ghosts that people talk about. Despite these supernatural things being well known to the students, they're written off as fun and fake stories to tell others. Think of how, you know, you might be scared to walk under a ladder or how you might be scared to open up an umbrella indoors despite not actually believing in that superstition. However, after a near-death experience, Sam finds out that all of these superstitions are real and that he has a ghost roommate that he nicknames Rumi. Sam, Rumi, and Morgan, an amateur exorcist, explore their new campus and meet all kinds of new people and ghosts, and they try to help some ghosts try to pass on in peace before the other exorcists on campus get to them first. I imagine this to be in a kind of animated format with a kind of fun slice of life vibe with both heartwarming and heart-wrenching moments too, because you know, dead, dead students. <laughs> so now that the basics are on the way, let's get the drawing. So I will be introducing three characters today, and uh, I have just bullet points for them, not like a whole section because time limit and also I want to keep this kind of brief. Um, so the first person is Sam. He is uh, the main character of this story and he's a college freshman, he's 19 years old, and he has a go with the flow kind of attitude. And he's also never really had any friends in his, in his life. Um, so he's pretty lonely and awkward with others. He also likes to keep to himself though, but he spends a lot of his time listening to music from his earbuds. Um, I immediately imagine him wearing a lot of neutral colors, um, like some, some grays, Maybe some some brown, really gray though. He has like long hair that kind of covers his face because maybe like it goes with his, with his personality of like wanting to kind of sort of hide. And I, I, I don't know. We're still workshopping. This is what this is for. <laughs> He's really close to his mom. Um, I imagine throughout his life he has made like many failed attempts to make friends, but his mom would be like right there next to him to support him and encourage him, but not to push him far. If that makes sense. His mom is really supportive of him. And Sam feels really sorry for making his mom worry so much. So I, I want it to be like he he does try his best to make friends despite um, this weird kind of state of mind he's currently in. Um, he's not that good at talking to others in large and social settings, but he still wants some friends, you know? Like he's in this weird limbo state of, I'm starting this new chapter of my life and I really wanna make some friends and I, I wanna, you know, get out of my comfort zone and making friends is, really hard and it never works so why would I try now why, why would it work now and yes spoilers he does end up making friends with Morgan and Rumi but that isn't like the end of his arc like he still has to learn how to maintain relationships and to uh, maintain friendships and how to communicate and stuff he has this kind of sort of once something good happens it's only a matter of time before it goes away mentality too despite his awkwardness Sam's outlook is pretty neutral and understanding like, yes, what I just said about him was kind of sad and depressing, but he's pretty neutral all the time. Like, he doesn't look into other people's business, no matter what they may look like. Um, there are multiple sides to a story, and Sam wants to know all of them before he makes a judgment. And he also really wants to help people. He's very compassionate, I would say. That was that's, that's, his, that's his main strong suit. His ability to want to understand everything about a situation and his compassion. That's something that um, will also be an overlying theme in the story. So yeah, that's that's Sam's character.
And last but not least is Morgan, the novice exorcist who's also a freshman and Sam's roommate. Uh, there's actually a whole community of exorcists at the college. It's led by her older brother, Liam. Uh, the community is a secret to normal students, but also like, imagine if you went up to a person and you said, oh yeah, I'm an exorcist. You know, most people wouldn't believe them. <laughs> so it's, it's still a secret though, still works out. Even though she's an amateur and she hasn't exploded any ghosts either, she's very eager to prove herself and she's very serious about it. Uh, both she, Sam, and Ruby live in the same dorm, and uh, Liam is the RA of their floor. I really like the idea of her wearing this kind of trench coat with like a bunch of pockets inside that have like a bunch of exorcist tools in it. But other than that, she has a design I'm the least sure about, slash the most blurry about, if that makes sense. She's a very high achiever. She strives for the best in everything that she can do. She's very serious about her grades and performance. Heck, maybe she skipped the grade and like she she's 18 or something, because that's just how far ahead she is. Morgan cares a lot about how others see her because it's mostly how she's compared to Liam. Just putting this out of the floor, there's absolutely no animosity between her and Liam. They love each other very much. They're like the only family that they have. Um, they come from a family of exorcists, but they actually cut themselves off from the family and I'm still workshopping that idea. So um, just it goes to show that they are really the only people that I have left at, at their college. You know, the other exorcists always compare the two because Liam is like this, he's like the best exorcist on the campus. But, you know, Morgan, she's she's still a novice, but like she shouldn't be at her age. That, that all that comparing, it adds to the fuel to her fire of her inferiority. Liam is really important in Morgan's life. As said before, he's the only family she has left. Uh, but Liam is also acting as her mentor and caretaker and guardian while keeping his personal grades up and leading the exorcist group, while expelling ghosts on the campus. Like, dude has a lot on his plate and Morgan worries a lot about him. Liam doesn't really want her to focus on being an exorcist, at least for now. You know, they're out of their home, they cut themselves off from their family. He wants her to focus on being a freshman, you know, getting experiences and making friends. But you know, that also adds to the fuel of her fire because that just doesn't sit right with her. And to be fair, there are like ghosts on campus that actually cause harm to students. Like the campus definitely does benefit from having exorcists, but Rumi is just an example of that's, that's just like a ghost that's just vibing and chilling. <laughs> Morgan and Liam, especially Liam, like especially Liam and the rest of the exorcists expel on site with no mercy. Once again, especially Liam, he's very serious about keeping the campus ghost free. Sam eventually convinces Morgan that Rumi isn't doing any harm. Uh, but you know, it takes the three of them finding out that there's another way to exercise loose that is pretty much fulfilling their last wish so they can pass on a piece. And Morgan did not know that, like, at all. The problem is, Liam will absolutely not, no chance, show any mercy to any ghost. Like I said before, it is on sight with him. And neither will anyone else in the exorcist group. So now Morgan has to keep the secret from Liam and everyone else. And because of that, drama and tension ensues. Ooh, yeah. That's Morgan. <laughs> and here are the final noodles. Um, I would have added more color to Morgan, but it was like 2 a.m. at that point and I was really tired. So I just left it as it was. Uh, but this was a lot of fun. I'm, I'm glad I, I got to do this. Um, so yeah, thanks for watching. <laughs> Bye.